Sometimes you just feel a person just needs to be cussed out, right? Wrong. There is no shortage of people or things today that just makes you want to just mm, give them a piece of your mind. If you're like me, I grew up with parents who cussed. I mean, it's almost like they wrote the book on cussing. They invented words. And I used to cuss myself. I'm going to tell you how I stopped cussing. But the question is, is it a sin? Is it wrong for a Christian to cuss, to use profanity, to use swear words? Well, the first question needs to be addressed. What does it mean to cuss? What does it mean? Well, it is profane words, vulgar words, offensive, socially offensive words, abusive, foul, demeaning, derogatory words. Oftentimes, though, let's be honest, we use these words even when we're not necessarily speaking ill of somebody else, but we'll also use these words almost as an adjective to add some emphasis to the words. And sometimes it might be, in many cases, words or a statement that we don't really believe ourselves or we want someone else to really believe it. We'll add the blankly blank something. Give me the blankly blank. Don't do the blankly blank. And it might make someone stand up and notice and pay attention to what you're saying. Is that wrong? Well, to determine if it's wrong, where do we have to go? We've got to go to the book. And it may even indicate something else that we're probably not paying attention to. Paul would say in Ephesians 4.29, it says, Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment. In other words, there are times, let's be honest, where it's just something's got to come up and fiddlesticks, gosh, doggone it, my word, poppy cop, gee willikers, those kind of words, they just don't do it sometimes. Sometimes there's a something, sometimes there's an intensity in you that calls for a word that's just as intense, that will just get somebody's attention or just, you just want to get it off your chest. But Paul says, don't let unwholesome words come out. And let's just be honest, guys. You know that some of these words, if not all of these words that you would think that, that we would consider to be curse words or cussing are not wholesome. These are words that you use normally or maybe normally, hopefully you don't use them normally, but you would not use in certain situations. What I mean by that is this. Some people are going to say it's just normal, it just comes off without thinking. Well, that's just wrong because the truth is you do think about it. There are certain places where you can you control yourself and you know what is and what's not going to come out. At a job interview, you're not just letting curse words fly out. At In front of the judge, at a wedding, in front of the babies, in front of the children, at church, hopefully. And so you can control it. It's not as subconscious as we think. Matter of fact, it's not subconscious. It is conscious. We know exactly what we're saying, how we're saying it. Oftentimes, it is fueled by emotion. And if a person doesn't have control of their emotions, doesn't have self-control, well, it might be the fact that there's a bigger greater underlying problem there. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Peter says in 1 Peter 3.10, he says, the one who desires life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. It's your tongue. Control it. It's not that big. And I understand sometimes, all the time, we all can relate. It gets us in trouble. We shouldn't let cursings come out and then at the, at the same time later on let blessings come out from the exact same well from the exact same mouth that should not be especially for believers james tells us in james 3 that we bless it with it we bless god we curse folks that's just duplicitous that just speaks of something that's just not right if you are a christian you want to do as paul says in first corinthians 10 31 he says whether you eat or drink or even just speaking Whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Give no offense. Look what he says in 32. Give no offense either to Jew or Greek. Give no one any offense because of what you said. Just as I also, verse 33, please all men and all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of the many so that they may be saved. The goal of what I'm saying, the goal of what's coming out of my mouth ultimately is that it leads somebody to Christ. And let's just be honest, sometime throwing out a few choice words, curse words, swear words, we know that's not going to bring someone to Christ, but it just felt good to get it off my chest. Well, hopefully it doesn't feel good. Hopefully there's some remorse when it happens. I understand there are some people that are still struggling with it. And if you still do cuss, if you still curse, if there's a occasional, and I hope it's occasional, not all the time, word to come out of your mouth that's not edifying, 
I pray that for you, it's convicting, that it's bothersome, that you don't like that. That shows at least a level of remorse, a level of repentance that's taking place in you. Now, when I said this might be indicative of a bigger problem, an underlying problem, we know that self-control is a result or a fruit of the spirit. But if you can't control your tongue, if you can't control this urge to cuss and it comes out, what does that speak of? Jesus puts it this way in Luke 6, 45. He says, the good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good and the evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bring forth what is evil for his mouth speaks what that which fills his heart. So if these curse words are coming out, where are they coming from? Out of the heart. If you squeeze a lemon, what's coming out of that lemon? Well, you might want to say lemonade, but really whatever's in it. I said lemonade, really lemon juice. But what's going to come out is whatever is inside. If somehow somebody puts some orange juice in the lemon, well, then when you squeeze it, it's coming out. The same thing with us. Whatever's on the inside, when we get squeezed, and sometimes it doesn't take much squeezing for something foul to come out. Whatever's on the inside is going to come out. And Jesus says, what's on the inside that comes out of your mouth? That's what's in the heart. And so if a person is constantly using cuss words, profane words, don't care, they just want to just express themselves in an angry fashion, it may very well be that we've got a dark situation in the heart. And that can be a problem. Now, if a person is truly saved and it's something they're working on and they want to get past and they've struggled with it, let me share with you what happened with me. I used to cuss and I was the best. I was probably one of the all time greats. Remember, my mother and my father would cuss. It was just what, what we did. It was just in the house. It was part of a casual conversation. When my father's addressing me or correcting me, yeah, there's some cuss words coming out. Uh, and so it didn't shock me when someone else used cuss words. That's just what it was. But how did I get away from that? Because the moment that I was away from my family, my, my parents, and I was off on my own, and as I was a young adult, yeah, curse, curse words were coming out left and right. Matter of fact, my wife would even tell the story that when she met me, she was a little bothered at the fact that I would cuss. And I would say, I didn't cuss that much, and she would look at me crazy. Yes, she did. Well, how did that go away? What happened? Well, truth be told, I didn't do anything. I didn't try to stop cussing. I didn't say to myself, you know what? I'm going to make sure I don't cuss. I'm going to try to hold my mind to it. No, what I did was I really did what James says. He says in chapter four, verse seven, he says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Well, he says in verse eight, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Well, that makes sense. The closer you get to God, the further you get away from everything else. If you get close to God and there are some things that need to be cleansed in you, Who's going to do it? He will. And so it wasn't so much a focus on dealing with that particular sin. The focus was just getting closer to him. And as I got closer to him, my heart become, began to change. And it changed at a more rapid pace. There were some things that I still struggled with. That's not what I'm saying that you're not going to struggle with anything. But this right here that's coming out of your heart into your, into your mouth, into the atmosphere for people to hear, things that's going to make folks look at you, well, that shouldn't be because we want people to see our goodness or the goodness of the Lord coming out of us. And so even though that might be indicative of an issue with the heart, that can be changed just by getting closer to him. And so to answer the question, is it right? Is it a sin for a Christian to sin? Well, yes, it is. There's just no way around it. But how can you fix that? Well, you can't let him fix it by you going closer to him. Amen. Amen.